ain't gonna necessarily lie. Trying to think of how I'm gonna go about this video is by far one of the hardest things I had to do, mainly because it's something that is hell annoying that continues to happen, right? And if you've seen the title of this video, you're probably thinking, damn, that's a harsh way to kind of put it. And you're right, it is. And my hope is that hopefully this will get into the eyes of some Japanese developer, some studio, or just a random citizen of Japan and honestly get mad because hopefully this does make you mad enough to want to listen to what I have to say about why I'm saying all this sort of stuff, right? Let me simply start by asking you a question. Why do so many people in the West like anime or just Japanese games and JRPGs in general? It's very simple. They provide a product and a sense of entertainment that is not found in their own home country. Japan is one of the most innovative and creative people when it comes to storytelling. I will sit here and stand on that hill. They have told stories that can transcend generations, honestly. Literally one of the biggest games that has ever transcended gaming as a whole, Final Fantasy VII, is gonna come out with a similar moment that might happen next month, honestly. And you can't tell me that Japan and their games haven't transcended literal people and languages and just in general everything of fictional media and content they have really good material whether it's buster sword boy over here trying to save the world or whether it's the boy with the key that's wanting to save multiple different worlds in the multiverse honestly they tell really good stories really good characters and sometimes characters with moments that i can relate to hell and they don't even shy away from other things that's not necessarily just epic and cool but they got sex appeal right too like fine female characters ripping clothes off of other fine female characters right something that doesn't make any kind of sense but it's perfectly fine because it's fiction at the end of the day but then you get the western people that is in your businesses and in your type of industry in your studios with these localizers your translators your esg people your ethical department that works with the global audiences and essentially don't listen to the global audiences and then they tell you what global audiences want essentially by saying things like oh well we have this girl here but her skirt is a little too low so you might want to straighten that out and you know make it longer so we can't see the cheeks area or oh maybe there's too much costume ripping or you know jiggle faces so tone that down no one boobs move like that in real life and shit you know or oh this character looks too attractive make her ugly because you know no one wants to be too pretty you can't have that in this world and then you in lie see the problem what they say is not what we want right we don't necessarily mind to see two characters female in particular rip each other clothes off in fact that's some cool shit <laughs> that's some that's some nice ass shit that i'm pretty sure a fair amount of people don't necessarily mind we don't also necessarily mind to see characters go ham on just the creative art that they can do and what characters can just really bring to the table in terms of their story and how they can carry themselves right unlike in the west where certain characters can only carry themselves in certain ways for example if chainsaw man was made by someone american you know what they're gonna do to makama they're gonna make her a hero. They're gonna make her a saint, even though she has committed terrible atrocities and is an asshole, but they're gonna make her a hero because she's a woman. There's no weak points to the women. They don't have weak moments. They're they're perfectly fine. You know, they're just, they're queens that we should be serving, honestly, as the source of us, and we're and they're the queens of that land and stuff like that, right? And that's how basically America would treat Makima versus what it would be in Chainsaw Man as we know it today. But then look at shows like Amadaka Box, where you have this female character that is perfect in every way and basically still, for some reason, can't integrate into human society normally. She definitely is someone that is perfect to the point where it makes her imperfect, honestly. And it's the biggest thing that kind of is the problem of Madaka honestly as a whole of a story essentially how does she kind of fit in with the rest of society she has her weak moments of getting her ass beat she has weak moments of failing a lot of times but guess what she gets right back up stands up and try to go back at it again or tries to find a different way to the solution of the problems she's allowed to grow she's allowed to basically make mistakes 
but in the West, nope, we can't have them because women are heroic and stoic and they don't need anybody except a gay ass partner. That's all they really need. And then they start pushing in the progressivism speech. They start pushing in the woke agendas. They start pushing in the racial issues. And then they start pushing in the, you know, gender things and stuff that don't necessarily need to exist in fiction. So when you see people get mad over Bandai and Sega about the localizers and what they're doing, you can kind of understand why people are so pissed off about it because this is not what we want. We want people to make, you know, in Japan, the Japanese games the way the Japanese wants to make their games and have fun with it. And then if we can enjoy it, we'll enjoy it on our side. You don't need to change a thing of how you make games. Focus it on your Japanese side, then the Asian market. And then if we enjoy it, you know, we'll enjoy it and join in, right? That's how it always has been and how it always should be. If you focus too heavy on a different audience that isn't your own homegrown audience, then you're going to basically forget about them and then trash them and make horrible decisions between your anime and your games and other pieces of media as a whole. And to any dev or studio that has these ESG ethical departments in their studios that work with people like Sony or Nintendo sometimes and a bit of that Xbox as well, let's give it a stab at you. They don't like you. They don't care about your products. To be honest, why do you think something like Senran Kagura got censored hella hard in Burst Renewal? I'll give you an answer. It's because they didn't want to see the Japanese win. They didn't want to see that. They already don't really give a shit about you as translators. And if you've seen anything of what Jamie Markey has done, you know, one of the voice actors of one of your Japanese characters, Ria Scrimmery, you would know she don't give a shit about, you know, Japanese culture or anything like that. She's just doing this shit for a paycheck and to push her agenda. And that's essentially it. And if you think I'm lying, really think about it. How come there is so many adult games in, you know, the West with realism and showing all this type of content, but when it comes to any of your Japanese games that equally show that much content or a little less than, and it's in an animated game especially, how come your game gets cut with content and told what to do versus these other games that don't? For some of these companies, I will chalk it up that they don't necessarily know exactly what's going on, that they aren't necessarily fast at hearing information about audiences and in the internet and things of the sort. I'll chalk it up to them being manipulated and not necessarily knowing. But for the companies that also do know and understand what people want and you don't give them that shit anyway, you foul as hell. Not only are you basically a failed ass dev or studio, you are basically a traitor to yourself to not only your company, but to your own country as well. You are a fat ass traitor when it comes down to it, because if you think this is what people really want to go to America, to basically have the same shit that they have over there and replicate it over here, that's not what anybody wants. You should make your own thing, make what you want. Have those sexy ass female characters, have those cool character moments where people can just relate to that shit in years time. Have those moments where these characters say some out of pocket, out of line things that will be offensive because that's some shit that people will want. Not necessarily saying it because, oh, well, we're going to have our characters say some offensive things because, you know, we want them to be vulgar and crazy and all that sort of stuff when it comes down to it just because, no, have a reason for it, but at the same time, don't necessarily hide yourself of what you want to do when it comes to it, right? It's like rants, right? I personally don't like rants, but I can at least respect the idea of a character like that existing, right? Which would piss off a lot of people in the West if they figured out, especially mainstream people, they figured out what rants really is. Rance is an asshole person. He basically goes for it non-consensually with sex. He essentially just kills anybody that's in his way and basically just does whatever the hell he wants to. Why? Because he does what he wants. Literally, that's all there is. And when somebody in America were to see that, a conservative more like, or a translator or a localizer, they will be shitting bricks because holy shit, they can't have that in America. But why? 
Why can't you just let the Japanese have it in? Why can't you just let people enjoy the shit that they want to enjoy? Why do you think when it came down to Bayonetta 3, you know, it was nice to see that there is an option at least. If you don't like the crazy, sexy content of Bayonetta, you can have the whole mode to turn it on and, you know, not necessarily see all that. But if you want to see that risque side of Bayonetta, then you have the option to turn it off. We don't even get options to turn certain things on and off in our games, yet they want to talk about controlling the physical game department. Basically saying everything going digital and you own absolutely nothing and you're going to like it essentially, right? If we can't even have good ass games that don't necessarily show us what we want to see or have characters do certain things that we want them to do, or for instance, a Siren Cogger game that doesn't necessarily shy away from the sex appeal from the characters and just have games where fine female characters is existing in, then what's the absolute point? What's the point? At this point, we should just make our own shit. We should just make our own games, go indie completely, tell our own stories, right? Tell our own fan fictions of what things should be like. Maybe they won't change. Maybe they might just say, well, we're making a lot of money, so we sold our soul for passion and, you know, send in the damn soul of money because that's all we really care about. That's the worst thing too, because it feels like nowadays no game is passionate about what they're doing. Barely any project is worth a damn. The only reason why I could say maybe FF7 Rebirth is going to be worth a damn is because they're genuinely wanting to make this game even better than the original, honestly. Have respect for the original game. Even if it changed up certain things, which I don't like, but still nonetheless, even if it changed up certain things, they have some level of respect for it, honestly, that I can at least appreciate when it comes to it. But the West, they don't respect you. They don't care about you. They don't care about what your product is when it comes down to it. They just want it to be putting in their own agenda speak. And hell, once you're done obeying them, bowing down to them, they're going to take your game, translate it in a different way. So now there's different dialogue in it. And now the characters mean different things from different audiences. And that's not anything what global audiences would want. And apparently, and I didn't figure this out until yesterday, apparently they want their hands on SNK. Guess what? They're not getting it because it's with that rap money so you know what <laughs> at least we get to have another day to live over there at snk but still when it comes down to things though they just want to control what you do your creativity your developing and your money they want to control basically everything that you have over there which is why we complain so damn much in the west about these sort of people because all they do is put in those woke california ass things and try to put in those agendas and things of the sort that no one cares about so at the end of the day if you are someone that's from japan or someone that is a dev or someone that works in these studios really look at those ethical departments really look at the esg look at what really take two steps look at twitter or something like that on the internet see what people really want from your games what can still be done in your games because you can do what you want it's fiction no one is getting hurt can we have that now not necessarily of course there's gonna be some dumb shit that's getting in the way because people have their own ideas their own takes and their own opinions on how things go but never ask you what you want never ask you what game do you want to necessarily make that you have the opportunity to make. Don't give in to these Western ideals. They're trying to control you, manipulate you, and take every piece of creativity and money that you essentially got until you're left with nothing but hatred from people. Literally. Do you want every game in your studio to be hated on? I don't think you do. You have to try to fight back against this. Kick these people out of your industry and just straight up say, you know what? We're back in business. Time for the Japanese to show you how shit is done. Send out some crazy ass game with fine female characters, cool ass story and, you know, epic ass telling of how things can go in that situation for those characters. And then let the Western audience be in shock and awe of just how amazing it is. And for those conservatives to be pissing them pants and just crying in a damn corner because they can't stop your creativity. So that's essentially all I have for you for this one. So hopefully you did enjoy. If you did, be sure to like, share, subscribe, hit the bell, make sure you're out. Also follow me on the socials and if you guys are on the channel, go find Cash App is available as well. And until then, it's your boy Jay, signing off. Have a blessed day.